Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I want to start with talking about a cool little app that someone posted over in the BGG forums. It was actually the app creator. It is a Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig scoring app for iOS. Now, unfortunately, it is for iOS only, but what it does is it takes like that, uh, that Apple AR kit tech, I believe is what it is. And you can just, you know, kind of show the picture. Maybe it's just image recognition. That's actually probably what it is. Anyway, um, you take a picture of the castle or and, and it does the scoring automatically. And I'll go ahead and post a picture of that video, but it's really cool. The, the guy who made it um, has a, a really nice looking UI, um, but he scored like seven castles in two minutes, which is it's almost like scoring the game while it's, it's not complicated it's easy it's almost like that's part of the game so the app itself is $3.99 which is maybe a little bit steep for scoring apps but I think this thing is going to be a massive quality of life uh, improvement so I will definitely definitely be picking this app up for the next time I play Between Two Castles and Mad King Ludwig which is hopefully pretty soon. <laughs> I'm going to do something I haven't done on this channel before. We're going to talk spoilers, and I want to give you well advance notice um, or enough advance notice to go ahead and click out if you're leaving us right now. I'm really sorry. What I'm talking about is this game right here, Side the Rise of Fenris, and specifically what we would find in this box right here. I wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, the contents of that box. So if you have not played the campaign and you don't want to be spoiled, I appreciate you checking out the video this week, but this is where I leave you. Thanks and have a, have a great week. I'll see you next week. But for those of you who are hanging around, let's go ahead and talk about Vesna. So Vesna is one of the factions that is revealed in the campaign of uh, side the rise of Fenris, but I don't want to talk about it in terms of the campaign. I want to talk about it in terms of the module because I don't want to take into account um, other mods that are in the game. So, um, I'll, and I'll go ahead and put this up on the screen too. But this is Vesna's uh, player mat, and she has, as you notice, um, two blank spots, and I think. That is one of the reasons why Vesna is so interesting because she has a a variable, uh, I guess, uh, mech mix or variable mech powers. She is literally different from game to game. And um, just to give you some idea, uh, the Vesna start the way she starts the game. Her camp, um, you get a, a bunch of these uh, tokens. Let's get the right side here in the Rise of Fenris, and you can just go ahead and take one out of the bag, and, and that's your starting position for that game, you know, Polonia or uh, Tagawa, and you just go ahead, and, and that's where you will then take up uh, residence on the map. So you have a random starting position. You have, you also have a whole bunch of these tokens right here, which are probably out of focus, but... Um, there's 18 of these mech ability tokens uh, in the Vesna box. And how that's going to work is you're going to draw six of them, and they're just totally random. You're just going to draw six. I'll grab six off the top here. Two, three, four, five, six. And you have some choices to make. So let's go ahead and see what I picked. The first one I picked was um, People's Army. Uh, People's Army is, of course... Um, that's a Rusviet ability. Um, that's if uh, in combat where you have at least one worker, you may pay, uh, you may play one additional combat card, um, so you can give Vesna one of Rusviet's abilities. Um, I also have Wayfair here, and uh, Wayfair being a Crimea ability, which will uh, let you move from a territory or home base to any inactive faction's home base uh, to your own um, or your own. I'll let you move back and forth. Uh, I pulled Stealth, which is Tagawa. I pulled Shield, which is Albion, and I pulled Camaraderie, which is Polanya. But there's also one here called Regroup, um, which is, I, you know, I don't, I think this one might be 
unique to the rise of Fenris. I don't remember this from any of the other ones, but it says, uh, you may retreat to adjacent territories you control. So that's probably why the rule book mentions that, um, that Vesna is a advanced faction because you have to take a whole lot of things into consideration when you're picking your mech abilities. Um, you are gonna, two of those on her mat are absolutely open. So certainly you have to pick two of those six that you revealed. The other ones go back in the box. You're not gonna use them this game. You're not gonna use them um, the rest, rest of this game. Um, they may come up in the next game. Hopefully you don't end up drawing the same six over and over uh, just for uh, variability uh, reasons. But yeah, the, it, it's really cool how you certainly have to pick two. You don't want to leave any open mech ability or deploying a mech does nothing. Um, but she's got a speed mech, which is a given. That's common. She has a um, river walk mech, which is kind of unique in that she can move from a territory with a structure or to a structure. So when you're starting off, if you ended up in a um, if you ended up in a territory, a starting territory where you're landlocked and you are you're surrounded by river, um, so basically not Albion and not uh, Tagawa, you have to either build a faction to get her out of there, which you can build a mine. But um, if somebody happens to be building close, you can move into their territory. So um, that's a little bit of a unique take on Riverwalk, but it's those variable abilities that really make Vesna unique because she can have some of the best abilities of all the other factions or she could end up with some of the worst of all the factions but it's pretty unlikely that you're going to draw six tokens and you only or mech abilities and you only need to take two it's unlikely that the six you draw there's not going to be two that you want and you sometimes you can get some pretty cool uh, combinations going um but you definitely have to be comfortable enough in the game of Scythe to be able to react on the fly like that, to have some of those, to take advantage of some of those advantages or to work around some of those, we'll say challenges or disadvantages based on the mech abilities you draw. Now, uh, Vesna also has a faction ability called Technophile. And what that does is, is it's kind of cool, is right off the bat, Vesna starts with three factory cards and she has the ability to get a fourth factory card at the factory. But here's the thing. It's a one-time use. She has them right out the gate, but once she uses it, she discards it. And that's true of even the one you draw from the factory. So, well, in a normal game of Scythe, maybe you're not using that factory card a crazy amount of times more than, you know, three or four or five times it still feels like a like a restriction in that you know if you have some factory card that's like hey pay a coin and build a structure or pay two coins and build a structure you can't just you know beat that beat that thing to death and, and just like i'm deploying all my buildings like it's still a one time use and it's still almost uh it, it's it's not like something where you're just going to be like my first three turns i'm blowing through all my factory abilities i don't know that that's the best thing to do i think vesna works best when you're taking your time and kind of trying to decide what to do and when um let's see what other notes i made here um yeah i think that's the the most interesting thing about vesna i love that that ability it almost feels like vesna was kind of like the brainchild before the before the whole uh, modular board because she is almost modular in that like you get something different every time and you have to be able to react to what you get and for that reason I like that challenge as a, a player aside that's you know seen a lot of the base game and seen a lot of you know the expansions and what that brings I like that I don't, just like with the modular board, I'm not going to have a, a preset move set, you know, where I kind of know like, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, if I'm Rusfi at the first thing I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm going to produce, you know, oil and, and iron. I mean, you don't have like that. I mean, that's pretty much a given if you're doing Rusfi. That's probably the first thing you're doing. And with Vesna, you know, her, her starting territory is going to differ every time and her 
abilities are going to differ every time. The factory cards are going to differ every time. I think somebody had worked the math at one time on BGG and there was something like taking into account all the factory cards, all of the 18 mech abilities um, and taking into account, you know, her variability, like there's like 27 million or something like that, different combinations of all the different starting locations. So all those things taken into consideration, she's just a wildly different beast from game to game. And so I think that does maybe, you know, give people pause in that, she might be great for one game, like maybe to the point that you would consider her overpowered, but then a game later, she's, you know, you're kind of struggling. Like, at least for me, I struggle a lot when I am Nordic. And I, I see a, uh, a, a, I guess, a situation where you may be in a situation where I just can't make Vesna work with this combination of home base and this combination of factory cards and this combination of mech abilities but i definitely think that's more about me and my familiarity with the game asai than well i have a, a quite a few games in i wouldn't say you know that i'm good or great by any means and so for that reason i just i really like games or factions that make me think where where it's not just let me react to what the other people are doing, but it's let me react to what the other people are doing. Let me figure out how to make the most of this combination of starting location and faction board and all of those things. And so that, in a nutshell, is Vesna and what she brings to the game of Scythe. And so I'm curious. Um, obviously, if you're still here, you've probably played The Rise of Fenris. Um, or you just don't care about spoilers, and that's fine. So I'm curious, if you've played Vesna, did you have any, uh, and, and this is probably more true of, have you played Vesna as just a base game, not necessarily in the campaign? I like the not just reacting to my opponent. I like the fact that I have to figure out how to make the most of my, my character and, and how she's made up in her starting location. I really enjoy kind of like that puzzle and figuring out how to make the most of it. I am not one of those players that is, you know, gung-ho on winning every single game. I kind of enjoy the puzzle of how to, like I said, of how to make the most of what I've got. So for that reason, Vesna is probably one of my favorite factions to play in the game when I want kind of that puzzle. Have you played Vesna? What kind of experience did you have? Did you have any of those games where you just could not get out of the gate? Or did, have you had any of those games where you just had the perfect combination of mech abilities and starting location and you just tore it up? I'm really curious to hear what how that experience went for you. Um, that's all I have this week. I think next week, nope, I can't uh, talk about stuff next week either. I won't get into that though. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, as always, Take care of one another, and I'll, uh, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.